Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Nord to explain here, bring you guys another board to two blue vortex update. And today we have official spoilers coming to us via the official board to account for the upcoming manga chapter. And somewhere Kawaki is running to go high because he doesn't just have one person pulling up in the corner how looking for Naruto. He now officially has double trouble. As a reminder, the board to chapter will drop officially on the 20th of this month on the Viz Media Shonen Jump app, which is free to to read and Shueisha's Manga Plus app, which is also free to read. So remember to support the official release, but when more spoilers drop, I'll have the full spoiler breakdown in the next couple of days, assuming we do get leaks this month. The last reminder is that Boruto has now taken the approach that Dragon Ball Super has been doing for the last several years, which is drop official previews before the chapter to drum up hype. But whereas Dragon Ball Super gives us unfinished storyboards, Ikimoto's taking a step further by having an entire page released in high resolution to jump off the hype and my god this is actually an interesting one finally quick plug we have a 30 minute boruto video that was supposed to drop today but instead it's going to be dropping this weekend due to the promotional spoilers being released so you want to keep notifications turned on because that's a really juicy topic so we got the cover for v jump magazine with boards on the cover it looks amazing but what you're really here for is the official promo spoiler that shueisha wants us to know is that it isn't just Jura in Konoha, but he's also brought his right-hand man Hidari there with him into the village, and we have a pretty funny scene where Hidari is walking through a random bookstore, and he's calling out Naruto by name, and even Jura's like, wait, is this dude serious right now? He's really calling for Naruto with a straight face, and he's expecting the guy to answer, which I do enjoy seeing the small bits of comedy that are continue to be sprinkled into the story. It does show that number one, Ikimoto's getting more comfortable in conveying comedy because it's a self-admitted weakness of his when it comes to his art. And when you read Naruto's manga, humor was always a crucial element to it. But what's interesting about their dynamic is that we see the personalities of Jura and Hidari, they're completely different and it adds room for potential conflict in the future. Hidari appears to be wanting all the smoke right now and Jura is the one being more cautious and thus he's coming off like the more dangerous one. Jura is continuing to seek out knowledge before making a direct move which does give me some hope for the character because we see he isn't blindly rushing into anything and he's maintaining that mystery element that is needed to continue adding layers to his character. However, the decision to subvert our expectations with Hidari, that is an interesting one because it's clearly intentional. He spent the last few chapters with it appearing as if Hidari was questioning what the purpose was, questioning why he needed to consume Sarda so badly. Jura was shown pausing at Hidari's words like, wait, why is this dude challenging my authority? And it gave off signs that Jura was keeping his eyes on Hidari and the way he was guiding the other Shinju like Matsuri in that direction of who they should be targeting to consume. It gave off severe vibes of a serious gaslighter in the making yet in this chapter which again is out of context since will be an early page in the chapter itself this appears to be a sign that Hidari has fallen in step behind Jura and he's coming off as dim-witted as the person they're inside the village to hunt which is Naruto between the two of them they might not be able to crawl their way out from underneath bed sheets with a blinking arrow and a small red circle saying that you are here I think many of us expected Hidari to take on more Sasuke's traits but I personally take this as a welcome surprise and I go a step further and say if Hidari has continued to be shown being dim with it it's important to remember that Toby was a knucklehead and Toby ended up being the most dangerous Akatsuki member Hashirama and at times Minato came off like goofballs compared to the Hokage and those two for the longest part of the series were considered the two strongest Hokage on Jura himself the continued decision to have him be shown reading books makes me wonder two things number one is he going to eventually find his way reading the book that Jiraiya wrote that inspired Naruto's namesake like me and other people memed after the last chapter? And number two, are we about to be swerved in the story? The obvious matchup for Hidari is Sarda, 
and it's the same with Kawaki and Jura. Hidari is based off of Sasuke's chakra. Sarda is Sasuke's daughter. Sasuke got turned into an apple tree in order to create Hidari. But Jura, sharing a common thirst of knowledge makes me wonder if we're going to get an interaction between Jura and, say, Sarda or the class rep. Part of the fun in introducing new characters as a writer is the interactions. It opens up other possibilities with other characters that you previously had no plans for which i get it i know that's unlikely it's still something i personally would hope for however the official spoiler release has something else i really had my eye caught by that i want to raise to your attention before we get to what this means for kawaki the structure of the buildings in particular the one in the top left corner which shouts out to k1k3 for coloring this give them a follow over on twitter it gives off the appearance of an older village the board to eric konaha has a more modern design which at first that's where my mind went but then i remembered that konaha how it's constructed due to the disputes that were had when the village was rebuilding under kakashi during the blank period which the naruto parent and child day novel goes into detail with which you didn't see that animated in the anime the top of the hokage monument is where all the luxury buildings and the central business district is it's where you see boruto and his friends oftentimes when you see the modern stuff in konaha but everything below the monument is filled with the older parts of the village the people and the businesses from the older generations who believe that placing a whole city and business district on top of the Hokage monument was disrespectful to the past Hokage even though Kakashi's logic was sound in doing so the village was expanding it officially became the capital land of fire under Kakashi's watch and due to pain's attack 19 years ago in the timeline there are parts of the village where it was cracked too much into the foundation for anything to built on top of it even with the advancements made in science up until that point in time when kakashi oversaw the villages continue rebuilding during the blank period it was deemed impossible for some areas i point that out to say this jura showing up in old konaha or old town as borto's anime puts it it fits the consistency of jura's character in my opinion which is he takes a more measured approach and wanting to go through old Konoha makes the most sense for the character because old Konoha is where Naruto grew up. If you want to learn more about someone, then you have to go look into where they came from and where they started at and begin your search for information there. There's only so much info that one can glean from reading books about someone or reading books about the world they came from. You can read all the books you want about how life works. However, there are just some things that you have to look into for yourself. You have to experience for yourself in order to understand how life works or in some cases to learn about someone because there are just only things that life can teach you so it does make me wonder was this an intentional decision on the part of jura to go there potentially in the far corners of konoha before making his way to the forefront of the village just under the base of the hokage monument where the hokage tower and the academy is located obviously this isn't going to be a whole sub arc of jura exploring the various bookstores and attending book clubs and diving into various tea shops and wine tastings of konoha that's only something we'd be forced to endure if boruto's weekly anime was still ongoing and we were forced to suffer through stuff like this as a result i have seen some people question if this is even konoha that they're at and while i don't rule that out i don't think that's as likely boruto like naruto is for the most part a konoha centric story in manga format outside of a few handful of chapters in the sand village and in the cloud village for the most part the story stayed in the land of fire with boruto being monthly i don't see them changing that anytime soon now this does bring us to a big question which is how will kawaki be impacted by this it's one thing for kawaki to be expected to fight jura on his own i think that seems inevitable since kawaki is the one who sealed naruto away in the first place and kawaki stands to lose the most if jura and hidari are doing what they're literally doing which is walking around the village calling out for naruto have you seen naruto naruto zamaki where are you they have better luck not looking in a bookstore for naruto the last place that naruto would ever be seen they'd have better luck going to a hot spring or the ramen stand however the two versus one battle it seems like it's more than kawaki would be able to handle boruto has the most impressive feat so far in boruto to blue vortex i think most of us would agree with that and boruto had a little bit of trouble with the shinju granted 
he was in base and he was caught off guard. But if we're right about Kawaki having gotten stronger during the time skip, but being rusty in combat because at some point during the time skip, he got a little bit too complacent. This might be the worst possible matchup for him. The other question we have to ask ourselves is if Jura and Hidari are there, then where are Matsuri and the Buck Shinju clone? The concept of them breaking up into two man teams, it gives off serial Akoski vibes, which I think that's cool, but it also shows some strategy in that they're doing the whole divide and conquer strategy. I think whatever is going to go on right now is clearly planting the seed for a much larger battle that's about to take place because Borta 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 8 is going to be the last chapter in Volume 2 of Borta 2 Blue Vortex. So it stands to reason the cliffhanger in the chapter is going to be a bigger set of blue balls than we have with all the other chapters because typically due to how manga is meant to be consumed which is yes you read it when it comes out in the magazines but ideally you're supposed to consume it volume by volume which is why i always go back and reread every volume of a series the ending of the manga volume is meant to make you anticipate what happens next and then rush to the magazine where the serialized chapters are released so you can support it whatever is going down in this chapter looks like major setup for a gut punch or kawaki that it's gonna have Damon sitting back laughing like the little man of city is, drinking his milk box, eating his animal crackers, sitting in Ada's lap, but it's clear there's a painful split from the lie that Kawaki spent the last three years living and his ability to keep it all together, which is gonna create desperation. And it's rival only by the desperation that we see in the newest Chainsaw Man chapter, which you can find out what I mean by that by clicking my review link here on the screen.